In this video, you will hear about one of the best business books I've ever read. We will talk a lot about love and examine our bodies. Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Nicholas and my goal for this year was to read 100 books. In this series of videos, I want to give a brief summary and overview over each and every one of them, as well as give my own personal opinion and rating in the end. So without further ado, let's continue the series with book number 16. Play It As It Lays by Joanne Didion. This book came to my attention after author Joanne Didion sadly passed away in the end of last year and her name made rounds on social media once again. She's hail as one of the favorite authors of the likes of Anthony Bourdain, Emma Stone or Michelle Williams. Her in 1970 published novel Played As It Lays is sold as an homage to the wild 60s and 70s in California between sex, drugs and rock and roll in Hollywood and Palm Springs. We follow Maria, an upcoming Hollywood actress with a troubled past and in a distressed mental state. Her marriage to film producer Carter is on the brink of a divorce and their young daughter Kate gets treated for an unspecified mental illness. In the ensuing social chaos, Maria goes on a rampart of self-destructive behavior. She wanders the plains of California between sunlit motel rooms and dusty bars, between alcohol, drugs and random sexual encounters to find new meaning to life. On paper, this sounds like an amazing plot, but very unfortunately, I could not get behind Joan Didion's writing style at all, which is why I have to give it two stars in the end. In my mind, this story is told in the most cryptic and bare bones way imaginable, as no story beat or character relationship is clearly laid out or explained. I really couldn't get into Didion's prose, and thereby this book became a confusing mess that in the end totally missed the impact of the final plot twist for me. Actually, a lot of people hail Joan Didion's writing style as one of excellency and delicacy, saying that her prose would perfectly reflect the state of depression that Maria is in, but in my mind the author missed out on so much potential that the storyline could have had if it were just for a bit more clarity on who's who and what's going on. So for me the book didn't end up what the premise of the time period and the setting sold me on and thereby resulted in being a personal disappointment. I'm sorry Joanne, but I'm sure it's me, not you. The Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco out of all the business slash non-fiction books I've ever come across, this is probably the one which had me to rethink my life the most. It's partially even accountable for this YouTube channel. Author MJ DeMarco is an American self-made millionaire who built several successful businesses. In this book he shares some harsh truths about modern work and grind culture, but also gives a clear roadmap on how to exit the rat race for good. I want to give a deep dive into his winning formula in the future in a whole separate video, but his concept goes something like this. He paints a picture of three lanes, which are metaphors for different ways of living life. There's the sidewalk, the slow lane and the fast lane. If you're walking on the sidewalk, you're basically selling your time to an employer for money, living paycheck to paycheck on a low income or minimum wage job, which doesn't allow for any savings. If you're driving on the slow lane, you still sell your time for money, but you make enough to put some of your income into a savings account, invest it into a diversified index fund, and hopefully, thanks to the compound effect, become a millionaire by the age of 75. If, however, you want to drive on the fast lane, you need to decouple your income from your time, use the leverage of scale to your advantage, and in the process, exit the red race for good. The millionaire fast lane could have gone the full five stars for the way it motivates you and sells you on its ideas, but Due to some minor grabs I had with it, I will give it four and a half instead. It's an eye-opening book in many ways that made me question some of the decisions I've made in life, but also reassured me of the risks I've taken in the past. Sometimes the author comes off as a bit full of himself, but I still want to applaud him for being so straightforward and honest with the reader. There are a lot of typical American tropes in this book, which if you live in other parts of the world, you have, just have to take them with a grain of salt and see them in their context. I have a lot more to share about this one, so subscribe to this channel to get notified when the full deep dive finally comes out. The Broken Wings by Khalil Gibran When I set out on my journey to read 100 books this year, I didn't just want to focus on the drawers of books I kind of knew I would naturally drift towards to or just read modern western authors, but also be open to books of different time periods and geographical origins. The Broken Wings is one of those novels, written and published in the early 20th century by Lebanese author Khalil Gibran. This novel takes us to the city of Beirut in the same time period. Our protagonist is a young boy of seemingly poor social background who runs into an old man, a friend of the boy's late father. One day the boy decides to visit the old man as he's one of the few social 
social context he still has left, and as he enters the old man's home, he falls head over heels in love with his astonishingly beautiful daughter Selma. They seem to be made for each other, so sweet and tender is their love. It's a sugar-sweet love story, until the day that the old man decides to promise the hand of his daughter to the priest's son instead, a highborn of wealth and social prestige. The Broken Wings gets three stars from me. It's an overly sweet, almost fairy tale like telling of first love. It's a critical commentary on the social and cultural traditions of its time and place. Although for me it's a book of two extremes. On one hand it's too sweet to be really taken seriously as a love story, and on the other it's too shallow in its critique to be taken seriously as commentary. I'm sure that this is one of those books best read in its original language, in this case Arabic, as sometimes the book wants to be so poetic, but the English translation then feels too translated and you just get a glimpse of what might have been possible. It's quite a short book though, so it might make for a nice and easy summer night's read. The Body by Bill Bryson One of the most mind-expanding books I've ever read is Bill Bryson's A Short History of Nearly Everything, in which he dives deep into the wonders of our world and universe, from large solar systems all the way down to the smallest particles ever discovered by mankind. The Body follows a similar concept, only this time he examines the human body in equally minute detail and with his talent for presenting complex facts in an easily digestible manner. He takes us on a journey through the whole body, from the top of your head all the way down to the bottom of your feet, from the uppermost layer of your skin down to the smaller cells creating the wondrous organism we call the body. It's a mix of science book and well put together fun facts that lends itself perfectly for highlighting all of these various tidbits. As a matter of fact, it's in third place of my most highlighted books of all time. These takeaways then might come in handy when casually dropping them at your next cocktail party or upcoming date. You are the product of 3 billion years of evolutionary tweaks would make for a great compliment, for example. This book gets 4.5 stars from me. The amount of dedication and research that Bryson put into this book is astonishing, especially given how dry and complex the topic can easily get. With his typical wit and contagious fascination for life, he not only sparks an interest for the human body in the reader, but he also creates a humbleness for everything we take for granted in our everyday lives. At another point Bryson writes, your body is a universe of mystery and this book elaborates on why that is. Anyone who has some sort of fascination for biology or medical history should definitely, definitely check out this book. Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson Open Water is the debut novel of black British writer and photographer Caleb Azuma Nelson. It's a modern love story about two young black artists, a photographer and a dancer, meeting at a bar in London. They quickly start growing fond of each other, whilst being faced with the difficulties of a potential long-distance relationship between London and Dublin. Ultimately, they have to find out whether their emotions are strong enough to carry them over distance and time, all whilst being confronted with the ever-ongoing racism against people of colour in modern-day Britain. This book comes with a twist that I have not often seen done before. It's written in second person singular, meaning that the author speaks for you and to you as the reader, retelling what you did and how you felt in certain situations. It takes some getting used to, but for the most part it's a great technique to feel a closer presence within the story as the reader. Open Water gets 4 stars from me. It's a finely crafted modern love story, written poetically and executed realistically. Caleb Azuma Nelson is an important and talented new voice of our black artists in Great Britain, but the book feels a bit unpolished in places. As beautiful as the poetry and prose is, it can feel a bit much and repetitive at times. Sometimes it feels like the beautiful descriptions of, say, a basketball game is just there for the sake of it, because he can, not because it would give the story any greater depth. Nevertheless, Open Water is a unique book that gets huge props from me for being bold and brave in its execution, and Caleb Azum Nelson deserves all the praise he's getting for his debut novel. I'm really looking forward to what he's writing next. So, these were another 5 out of 100 books for this year. If you enjoyed this content, please leave me a like and subscribe. And if you fancy buying any of these books now, like The Millionaire Fastlane, check out the links in the description below. These are so-called affiliate links, so I get a small kickback whenever you purchase a book through these links. Thank you and see you next time. Ciao.